Some people would say that I've broken two of their cars, but I would say that is very unfair. So that one's misfiring, and that one's an imp. And uh, yeah, I mean, my I'm not being you know I'm not saying anything. My starter motor is fine. My gearbox is not. But uh, yeah. Hello, I've done something completely out of my comfort zone. My comfort zone is somewhere over there at the moment. Uh, I've come to a car museum and I'm talking in front of... Well, there's no one here at the moment, but you have to take my word for it, I was. This is the Great British Car Journey. It's a museum up north. Where are we again? Dar Derby. Somewhere near Derby. And um, basically, this is quite a cool place. So it's an entirely British collection of cars. But the difference with some of these is they've got a thing here, a feature called Drive Dad's Car. I don't know why it's Dad's Car. It, maybe it's Mum's as well. Um, but you can pay money and you can drive these cars around their little private course here, which is unique. I don't know of any other museums that do that. There are a lot of cars in here. I've not really looked at any of them, but I need to go in and find a favourite. But before I do that, I'm going to drive three cars. And there'll be three different videos. This is the intro that will go on each video. So you'll see this intro three times and that'll be really boring. One of the cars you might know, the other two you won't. So yeah, that's it, end of message. Right, last uh, test of the day. Um, third test, I don't know if this is the order they'll go out, but this is the order I'm recording them in. Rover P4, about to be overtaken by a really noisy Austin something or other. 1300 GT. Yeah, so basically I know nothing about this car at all. Uh, I didn't research it like the Austin 7 and that is perhaps my downfall in this. Basically what a quick Google search has just told me is that this is a Rover P4 but it's the 110 version. The 110 signifies the horsepower which is 123. It's a 2.6 litre straight six. This one I think is running on f three or four of those. Um, but it does sound nice and basically this is like I mean the P4 came out in 1949 so it is older than the DS and it feels it in fairness um, but it, I think it's a really pretty car and look kill yourself door no not kill yourself doors suicide doors how cool is that there's my coat it's very comfy as well apparently I've never sat in it oh wow It's, it's not soft, the seat's soft, springy, but kind of like it all goes down together. It's not like you sort of slump into it like a cushion. Um, but you do sink back into it. That's a good armrest. Yeah, I mean, I guess the royal family would have had these, maybe. This would probably make quite a good wedding car. Especially in this color. I don't know why, but I thought this car was gonna be black. Um, yeah, so. Plenty of room in there for doing whatever it is Rover drivers do. I don't know what that is. Um, but the 110 was the last P4 produced before it was replaced by the P5, which is a, a good sequence of numbers. Um, and that's the car that had the Rover V8. This doesn't, this has the 2.6 straight six. I wonder if that's the one that ended up in the P6 and maybe even the SD1. Don't know, no idea. Put it in the comments because people watching this video will know more than me about this car. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite a big car. I mean, it's got to be. It's not as long as the DS, but it's it's probably as big as a DS kind of thing. I've no idea how to open the bonnet. Oh, it's fine. The bonnet's already open. We don't need to worry. There we go. Look at that. I was wondering if I'd see why it was. Um, Oh look, Thor is on the engine. Yeah, I was wondering if I'd see why it was misfiring, but yeah, that is indeed a straight six. I mean, it's basically pretty standard. A heater box at the back there. Where's all that air coming from? Oh, so the air's coming through from that vent at the top. Little pancake filter on the carburetor there. Yeah, I don't know much about these to be honest, but. Um, but the main reason for me doing this car really it seems a little bit off the beaten track for this channel but rover used to make some pretty like they used to 
I'm not going to say good cars. They were good cars, but they used to put effort in. They, they, they a lot of engineering went into these cars, um, and I'm quite intrigued by this one to see what the level of engineer is on this because a P4 came out in 1949, so that's quite old, and that's pre DS and. All dates are done by DS, before DS, after DS. So it's like Jesus. I want to know whether the, how out of date this car is now. How ahead of its time was it? So I'm looking at the suspension, thinking is it going to have some trick multi-link setup? And I can't see because it's too dark. And then the, the answer to that appears to be no. It's a uh, wishbone. Oh, it's a big swing arm at the bottom. It's like an imp. It is, it's got big arms like that in the, underneath, but it's got an arm at the top, and I think that's... It's kind of connected like it's an anti-roll bar link to the, to the upright, but I don't know if it is. I think it might just be an upper link, but that means it's effectively kind of got double wishbone front suspension. It's actually quite smooth at the front. Uh, the back was a bit crashy. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing, yeah, that's got leaf springs. Yeah, okay, yeah, so the engineering perhaps wasn't crazy at the back, um, but it's a pretty car. It's got lots of nice little touches. I noticed the fuel cap earlier on. I noticed this because it was open and it looks like it's been leaking. Nice little door there. I mean, if you know about Rover P4s, you'll know more than I do about this car, so yeah, just write it in the comments. It's good for the algorithm. Um, I got this car because I just wanted to have a go in it. I don't know anything about it. My dad didn't drive one. But you can drive one. You can come down here and drive this very car. Just pay some money. And uh, ask them nicely. It's got a tow bar. A rubber mounted tow bar. Oh, that's nifty. Look at that. Nice little... Uh, doesn't stay up, doesn't stay up. But yeah, that's where you put the bodies, bags. That's where you put bags. A painted number plate, look, a lovely old number plate. I'm guessing that's the reverse light. I mean, yeah, to be honest with you, I don't think you'd, if you were robbing a bank, like this person seems to be. Where are they going? Um, yeah. That's the other car, you can rent a Vauxhall Astra from Great British Car Journey. Yeah, if you were going to rob a bank, uh, you wouldn't do it in this, unless you wanted to get caught, in which case you could do it in this. I think this would go quite well. I mean, 123 horsepower is, is pretty decent um, for its age. What's that at the bottom? What's this? See, I wanted to go looking for crazy engineering. Oh, what's that? Is it gonna drop something? I'm intrigued, I wanna know what all this is. Wow! Yes! We found some engineering. Look at that! The spare wheel. So you can't open it from the outside unless you've opened it from the inside, which means it's in a locked cage. That's clever. Even DS's don't have that. That said, it does eat into the boot space quite a bit, but it means you haven't got to empty your boot to... Uh... Oh, hold a... It might not be a locked spare wheel anymore. It might be being too gentle with it. Why won't it shut? Well, anyway, that's the that's the spare wheel. So you've got a typical oldie worldy interior, but there's some really nice woodwork in here. Normally, I would say the only place for wood in a car is the boot, but in this kind of era, I think we can allow. Um, yeah, this is nice. It's just proper oldie worldy. You can't put the window down on this one. This is the handbrake. It's not an umbrella. If I let that down, the car will roll over my foot. Three pedals. 
Face. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, that's the that's the horn. Look at this. Okay, that's now one of my favourite things. Um, the gear lever is something I really like because look at this. I mean, is that the top of the gearbox? I'm not sure it is, but I think it might be like a housing above the top of the gearbox. But look at this shifter. So you got, oh, there's first, second, third, fourth, and then reverse is through the little indent, which is, the indent is very nice. That's a lovely, and that's reverse. The heaters uh, controls are down here. You can have cooling open and shut, heating open, but you can't have heating shut, uh, off, demist, no, no, that's not that one. That's windscreen. Screen, heat, increase, uh, screen defrost or demist, and then cooling, heating open, shut, etc. It's a lovely thing. It's really nice for all you ASMR freaks. Oh, you've got your controls here. Uh, panel, don't know what that does. Let's find out. Nothing. Um, fuel, reserve, and main. Oh, I wonder what that was. Lamps. Oh, I'm guessing that's lights. Brake warning. Indicator. Ooh, I keep hitting the horn. A lovely little indicator. Doesn't, doesn't stay on for the you have to hold that one down. Oh, look at that. A wise fire extinguisher. Do you know, that's what's just so good about this museum. It's such a great idea that you can get out and experience these. These cars are not concourse cars. They're not mint. You will find imperfections. This one's got gaps all the way around the doors, so it rains inside when it rains outside. But it doesn't matter because it gives you a feeling of what it's like driver over P4. And before today, I had no idea. Right, but yeah, enough talk about where I put my glasses. Yeah, enough talk about history and everything that I haven't really mentioned very much. What does a Rover P4 drive like? Oh, that river's high. Um, Yeah, so I can kind of feel that front suspension. It is softer at the front than the back. The back is much more basic layout. The front is kind of like an imp on steroids, but, and the back is way less advanced than an imp. But I think the closest thing I've driven to it before is a Mark II Jag, um, but that was in better health, arguably. Ride-wise, it was a bit smoother. Um, it's a lot quicker, but it had the same, the same kind of feel. It had, you know, the feel of the, well, I say the feel of the steering. There is no, there is no feel. There's no feel at all. Absolutely nothing. Um, but then it doesn't need to be. It's not a sports car. It's a car for, I mean, I don't know who this is for. This would have been for Hyacinth Bouquet in the 1960s, I imagine. I'm going to try not to lean on the horn as well. I'll keep leaning on the horn. But it's... Um, yeah, it's an experience. It's a shame it's misfiring because I think it would sound quite nice if it wasn't for that. And it would probably, probably go okay. That's <laughs> that sounds quite good. I wonder how tall fourth gear is. Very. No rev counter in this because, of course, you're not going to be racing around. <laughs> I don't know how many turns locked to lock there are. Hang on, all right, that's straight one. Two, no, I can't do it there. Let's do it over here. 
How many turns is it to full lock? One, two. <laughs> so that's uh, how many turns is lock to lock? Like four? Well, I can't really convey what it's like to drive this very well. So the best thing you can do is go down to Great British Car Journey and try it yourself. But to me, yeah, ride-wise, I don't think it's anything amazing. I was hoping it would be smoother than this, especially with how smooth people say that the later P6 was. But then, you know, that this wasn't in Rover's heyday of engineering. That sort of came a little bit later. I'm pretty sure they did a turbine version of one of these. I'd have to look, but... Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't go rallying in it. Well, you could, you'd just lose. So my time at the Great British Car Journey is at an end, and I've finished it with a Rover P4. And um, yeah, I think we should call it the Rover Arsenal, really. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. I think it's, it's got a nice, it would have a nice smooth engine if it wasn't misfiring. I think it would be quite a nice car. Um, I think it's a pretty car. The thing I was always had it going in my head when it started is how similar is it to a DS? Um, looking back at that now, I think that's a bit unfair. That's my, that's my conclusion. Because the DS was the most advanced car in the world almost when it came out in 1955. And this came out six years before that. So that's a little unfair on this car. And if we're talking about, you know, how nice things are to drive, the engine in this is way nicer than the engine in the DS. So yeah, this one, it feels a lot older than a DS. And really that's the, the biggest comparison I could make. So I need to try a P5 uh, and a P6, because of course that's the car Rover almost based on a DS. But I'm not here to talk about DSs really. I'm here to talk about this. And I don't know what else to say about it, because as you probably can tell, I don't know anything about them but I've just come at it from the point of view of someone who knows nothing about these cars to see what I notice about it. Because if you, if you know these cars, if you know, well, the Hillman Imps are cheap, but if you know Austin 7 Rubies and you know Rover P4s, you'd know everything to look at and you'd miss the obvious things that jump out at people who've never been in one before. So to me, the things I noticed, the gear change, the gear, I love that gear shift mechanism, it's great. It's brilliant. Um, the space in the back, it's nearly DS in the back, you know, in terms of the seat and everything, um, but not quite, but it's not far off. There's a lot of room in the back. Um, it would make a good wedding car. That's my conclusion. It would make a great wedding, especially in that color. Can you imagine with the, the strips up there, the ribbons? I think it would, yeah, I think it'd be a cracking wedding car. Wouldn't rob a bank in it. But if you were gonna cruise around when you were a family in the 1950s, can't see anything wrong with it to be honest so right that's it i'm going home because i'm freezing cold and soaking wet uh, thank you to the great british car journey for this day it's been great getting to drive all these different cars and you can do that as long as you've got a license and you don't come across like a moron uh, they'll let you drive their cars if you pay them some money and uh yeah they've got a whole range of cars you can drive um i couldn't drive all of them i could only drive three so there are others you can drive like a stag which I think is being driven by uh, iDriver Classic. Because it's hooliganing down the road. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'm going back down south where it's warmer. I prefer white limb restorations.